Here's someone using electricity to produce movement in one of the simplest ways. The electricity is being made to rattle a clapper against a bell. How is it doing this? Well, it's done by an electromagnet. First, let's look at an ordinary magnet. You've probably seen permanent magnets made of steel and shaped like a horseshoe, which will pick up small pieces of iron. If you take an ordinary piece of iron, it won't work as a magnet. But if you wind a length of insulated wire around it and pass an electric current from a battery through the wire, watch what happens. This time it will pick up the tax, though as soon as the current is switched off, it stops doing so. Now using an electromagnet, we can build up an electric bell. We fix a clapper on a spring just in front of it, so. And to the clapper, we fix a little piece of iron. Of course, there has to be a bell for the clapper to strike. Now, when we switch on the current, the electromagnet attracts the little piece of iron and draws the clapper towards it, so that it hits the bell. When we switch off, it snaps back again. But in order to make the bell ring continuously, we have to find some way of switching the current off and on automatically. This is usually done by making the clapper itself switch the current off and on like this. We take one of the wires from the electromagnet and bring it to a little contact on the opposite side of the clapper. And we attach one of the leads from the battery to another contact just touching it. As these contacts are most important, let's look at them close up. They open and shut like this. We'll slow the movement down to make it clear. Now, as soon as someone presses the bell push and switches on the current, the electromagnet attracts the clapper as before, and in doing so, breaks the contact here. So the clapper springs back and thus remakes the contact and switches the current on again. Then the whole thing starts over again. Watch it on this big alarm bell. Here's the electromagnet, and here's the make and break contact on the clapper. Here's the sort of electric bell you have in your house. Some types of electric razor work on a similar principle. But to be really useful, we need some way of making electricity produce a spinning motion so that we can use it to turn wheels. In fact, we need an electric motor. To build a motor, we also use electromagnets, but in this case, they do more than just attract a piece of iron. Let's go back for a moment to permanent magnets again. They don't have to be bent into the shape of a horseshoe, they can be just straight bars, like this. At one end of the bar is the north pole of the magnet, at the other end is the south pole. A horseshoe magnet also has north and south poles bent round to bring them side by side. Now, if we pivot a bar magnet on an axle through its middle and put a horseshoe magnet underneath it, the north pole of the bar magnet is attracted towards the south pole of the horseshoe but is repelled by its north pole. The opposite happens if we turn the magnet right round. The like poles repel and unlike poles attract each other. An electromagnet can be made to do the same thing. As soon as the current is switched on, one end becomes a north pole and the other a south, and it behaves just like the ordinary magnet. But now instead of turning the electromagnet round, we can change the polarity of the magnet by reversing the direction in which the current flows through the coil. That is, by changing over the connections to the battery. So that we can make it swing back and forth each time we alter the battery connection. Now let's take a bigger horseshoe magnet so that the pivoted electromagnet can be put between its poles. 
When we switch on the current, the electromagnet swings round to a position in a line between the poles of the permanent magnet. If we change the battery connections and give it a little push so that the poles are no longer in a dead straight line, it makes a half turn and stops. Each time we change the connections, the electromagnet makes a further half turn. With a little care, by breaking the connection at the battery at just the right moment, we can make the spinning magnet overshoot slightly and give it a start for the next half turn. So that we can keep the electromagnet turning round and round as long as we keep changing the connections to the battery. Our electric motor is beginning to take shape. We can rig up a kind of a switch connected to a handle, one which will change the direction of the current through the electromagnet without having to alter the connections to the battery. We can keep the motor turning merely by turning the handle of the switch. And next, well, the next thing is to get the motor to turn the switch itself, instead of having to do it by hand. So we mount the switch on the spindle of the motor, like this. Now, as the motor turns, it will automatically change over the north and south poles of the electromagnet at exactly the right moment. So now we have a real electric motor, one which will start turning as soon as we connect it to the battery and go on doing so until it's switched off. Here is a very simple sort of electric motor which you can get for working models. If you look inside it, you can see that it's built up in just the same sort of way. You can see the electromagnet, usually called the armature, inside the field magnet, and the changeover switch, which is called a commutator. But there are various other things a motor should be able to do before we can say that we have put electricity to its fullest use in producing movement. For instance, suppose we want to reverse the motor and make it spin round the other way. One way of doing this would be to turn the field magnet round so that it acts on the spinning armature in the opposite sense and therefore reverses the motor. But we can get the same effect by using an electromagnet instead of an ordinary one and merely changing the direction of the electric current in it. But there's still a further difficulty to be got over. The field magnet only gives a really hard twist to the armature when the poles are close together. By the time the armature gets, by putting another electromagnet into the armature, so that as the force from the first is reduced, the second comes into operation. Now we have an armature with four poles, but we needn't stop there. We can have armatures with six poles or even more, as many as we need, in fact, to get a smooth, steady movement. And notice one other thing. If we change the direction of the current in both the armature and the field coil together, which we can do here by changing over these plugs, the motor still keeps turning in the same direction. This means that the motor would work equally well on alternating current, that is, a current which is always changing direction very rapidly. Such motors will work on either AC or DC and are called universal motors. You will find them in vacuum cleaners, electric fans and other domestic appliances. The tiny motor which drives the hands of an electric clock is rather different. It works off alternating current only and uses the beat of the alternating current in place of the beat of a pendulum to keep exact time. AC motors of still another type are used in industry to run lathes and drills and the other complex machines in a factory. Electric trains, trams and trolley buses are driven by powerful motors using direct current because direct current gives you greater power for starting and it's easier to control the speed. Whatever the job, is an electric motor which will bring you the power you want. And whether they are operating an egg whisk or driving machinery, they are using electricity to produce movement. <laughs>